Oh, James Bond, you are being tragically mismanaged right now. So I've had a few conversations uh, with you guys, as well as you know, normal people in my day-to-day -day life, about James Bond and about how the first trailers seem to indicate it would be a, a shitfest. Terrible. All the interviews were coming out. Looked like it was going to be awful, like genuinely awful stuff. Second trailer comes out. Not that awe-inspiring. Not that much hype. But they seemingly removed a whole bunch of the telltale signs of it being terrible. Removed a whole bunch of the stuff which seemed to indicate they were going way off the rails. And now, and now we get an interview with The Hollywood Reporter and Kerry Fukunaga. Oh dear. Bond, you are being tragically mismanaged. Not only does Kerry Fukunaga admit an awful lot of horrible stuff, he also claims uh, Sean Connery's James Bond was a rapist. I don't remember any of that. But let's dive into it. Also, the broccolis. I don't know what they're saying. They're garbage. Ah, so let's dive into this. Ah, oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. And and make no mistake, like I'm approaching this this video from a whole perspective of this is tragic mismanagement because it is mismanagement, mismanagement of a property that doesn't need uh, modernising, as they're saying. It, it doesn't actually need modernising. It doesn't, right? It doesn't. You can keep the character the same, you can keep the character traits the same, but you can have individuals respond in a different way. So the core fundamental elements of that character remain the same. You could have, uh, you know, a James Bond sidling up to people like he's supposed to, you know, like that is inbuilt, ingrained in his character. And then you can have people just respond to him differently. That's how you could still keep things very same. But no, 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 no. Bond girl banned from set. You know, we must change him. Apparently he's a rapist, all this garbage. Uh, perhaps the biggest hurdle for the film was bringing its globe-trotting Lothario into Hollywood's post-Me Too reality. I'll stop you there. Not required. Okay? Not important. Actually, fundamentally, one of the least important elements uh, that you could possibly approach a James Bond film with. Get the action right first. Get the story right first. Get the villains right first. You know? Blofeld, brother, mm, why don't you focus on the story rather than trying to appeal to a bunch of non-consumers? Don't get it. Also, FYI, if my, my volumes are up and down, I'm deaf at the moment, so I can't actually hear what I'm saying. Good times. Anyway, uh, after all, No Time to Die began development in 2016. Oh, because 2016, the year that it began. Uh, before the industry embarked on a period of self-reflection in the wake of Harvey Weinstein's downfall for predatory behaviour. Though Craig's oeuvre puts a greater emphasis on the quality of drinks than the quantity of women, the history of Bond includes casual misogyny and worse. Ca oh, not casual misogyny. Oh, heavens. None of that casual misogyny, like holding a door open for women and, you know, saying, my dear... Oh, don't. Is it Thunderball or Goldfinger? Where, like, basically Sean Connery's character rapes a woman, Fukunaga asks. She's like, no, no, no. And he's like, yes, yes, yes. I wouldn't fly today. So just have the woman respond differently. Um, also as well, like, all the women smile and stuff. You know, they... The idea is, is that they, they want to resist Bond. Right? They want to play hard to get. That's the idea. Most most people understand that. Right? Most people understand that. I don't... How, how don't you, Kerry? How do you not understand that? You can't... You never heard the phrase playing hard to get. Really? Come on, mate. Come on, dude. But it continues. Uh, at Fukunaga's suggestion, Phoebe Waller-Bridge was brought in to work on the draft. He wrote with Neil Purvis and Robert Wade, who have worked on every Bond film since 1999's The World Is Not Enough. The perception was that Fleabag creator was used post-reckoning to make Bond more woke, but Fukunaga dismisses that idea, and his response is epic and such garbage. I think that's the expectation, a female writing very strong female roles, but that's something Barbara wanted already, he insists. 
From my very first conversations with Broccoli, that was a very strong drive. You can't change Bond overnight into a different person, but you can definitely change the world around. Like, just like I just said. Uh, you can change the world around him and the way he has to function in that world. It's a story of, oh my God, about a white man as a spy. It doesn't matter. Uh, about a white man as a spy in this world, but you have to be willing to lean in and do the work to make the female characters more than just contrivances. But also, isn't like... Uh, so, uh, I think that's the expectation of female writing very strong female roles, but that's something Barbara wanted already. So... So, so basically what you're saying is that, that was always the approach that was going to be taken anyway. You were always going to handle it completely differently. So you, you're saying, well, I, dis I dismissed that idea, but also you're admitting it at the same time. You're saying, well, we didn't hire her because of that, but we did because Barbara wanted that already. Um, and the thing is, you can change the world around him and the way the world interacts with James Bond as a character and not make him awful, you know? Like, he's not a rapist. The women play hard to get with him. He's the ultimate spy, you know? Women want him, but they want to play hard to get. Like, that's that's always the idea that I've had from it all. Uh, and then check this out. This is gold as well. Uh, Lynch, who plays double-O agent Nomi, in No Time to Die, thinks Fukunaga succeed. If there is not a joke from James Bond and Nomi, where he says something like "nom nom nom" or, or something like that, they've they've missed that. They've missed the beat. They've missed the beat. Anyway, uh, she she states this about Fukunaga succeeding and says Kerry had big discussions with Barbara and Daniel about how to give the female characters equity, how to keep them in charge of themselves, how to give them solo moments where the audiences learn who they are. You mean like in literally every Bond film? Remember uh, Ivana Top or something like that? I can't remember her bloody name. But this that was a that was a Brosnan uh, Bond villain, a girl, and she was a badass. Uh, come on, like people do remember the female characters as having agency for themselves. This is not like a radical new thing. You're not change. You're not reinventing the wheel here, right? This thing has always been done, but they're acting like it's not. And it's like, do you, do you, have you ever watched them? Have you watched them? Huh, Lynch? Have you watched James Bond? Because it sounds like you haven't. Um, it was really important to empower the female characters as standalones. And I think that he kept that in mind throughout the whole shoot. I didn't feel like Nomi, as a young black woman, was constantly standing behind the white guy, which for me is job done. Oh no, he heaven forbid that a side character stand behind the lead character in priority list. Oh, God, no. God, I couldn't possibly do that, could we? That's terrible. That's dreadful. That'd be awful. This film sounds like... This film, fundamentally, I believe now, will really, really struggle as a result of these silly, stupid adjustments and the way these, these individuals are talking about it. I mean, what are you saying? The second... The second character, secondary characters are now on par with Lee. How many leads do we have for this film? We've got like 20 leads. <sniffs> Fucking shit show. Uh, anyway, and that was a very conscious decision for Kerry. Kerry Fukunaga is actually like really, really good, by the way. This is why it's shocking that this is the crap that he's coming out with. Anyway, we get this statement from Barbara Broccoli as well. Like the tragic mismanagement of Bond. This is all mismanagement. If you're telling me secondary characters are no longer secondary characters because they didn't want to stand behind a white guy, fuck, fuck yourself. Like, it's, just, it's bad. That is bad. A bad narrative structure. That's going to be a bad script. It's going to be a bad movie. And no wonder why none of these trailers have managed to appeal to me in any way, shape, or form. I like If I go back and watch the original uh, Daniel Craig Bond trailers, there's something in all of them to get me a little bit amped. Nothing has got me excited for this. Right, and I'm open to being excited. I, I like James Bond. I like Daniel Craig as James Bond. But nothing. Literally nothing. Nothing nothing's appeased Jasper either. He's got his back to it and everything. Nothing. Anyway, Broccoli says this. I think people are coming around with some kicking and screaming to accepting that stuff is no longer acceptable. No. Sorry. Sorry. Barbara, when were you last accosted 
by a Scotsman going yes, yes, yes and pinning you down trying to have sex with you. Never. What are you doing? Come on. Anyway, thank goodness. Bond is a character who was written in 52 and the first film, Dr. No, came out in 62. He's got a long history and the history of the past is very different to the way he's being portrayed now. Uh, look, as long as... You, th this is the thing, right? This this is tragic mismanagement, no matter how you look at it, right? Like, No matter how you cut it, it's tragic mismanagement. The only things that I'm hoping for here is that you're keeping the core concepts of Bond the same. You can have the world interact with them differently, but the character has to be the same character that was written, that became popularised, right? It has to be. And, it, and, and it, it, that's all I'm holding out hope for. If you've got that, uh, uh, that's something at the very least. The rest of the film is going to be garbage. I think it's going to be crap. And I was holding out some hope for this. I had a discussion uh, last night, in fact, actually, uh, with someone, where I said, "Look, you know, I think, I think that they that, that there's 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 two ways to approach. You know, there's two ways that they potentially approach this. One, it absolutely is woke, and that they have approached it from that angle, and they've chose to modernise everything, which is seemingly more the case here." Uh, and that's why the original trailer appealed to that because they thought that would be really good PR. Uh, they then double backed on that for the second trailer because they're like, whoa, we need to try and get some people on side here because we've got a lot of backlash here. Uh, or they just tried to appeal to people and thought they could try and you know make it appear in that first trailer to be a little bit more uh, you know over overtly modern. Uh, and then they try to show what the film actually is. But I'm leaning more towards the case of this just being an absolute joke and a bit of a shit show. But I hand it all over to you. What do you think? Let me know down below. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. We've got memberships open. We've got Patreon open. And I've got a second channel. It's a car channel. Lots of exciting stuff happening with that one, actually. Uh, I'm going to be on a track day soon. Description box. Thanks. Got a PO box as well. Send me stuff. Cheers. Take care.